Welcome to Data Pro News, a weekly top story from the Data Pro email newsletter. I'm Peter Parker, and today we have something a little different. While we will be talking about the European Union AI Act and its implications for data engineers worldwide, instead of me reading the story, my colleagues from Google's Notebook LM are going to be having a conversation on the ins and outs of the act and what you need to know. So, with no further ado, over to them and their conversation generated using Notebook LM. All right, everyone, buckle up, because today we're diving headfirst into the EU's AI Act. Yeah, this is a big one. It's a kind of a big deal. I mean, it's putting some rules down for how we use AI, and we all know AI is, well, it's everywhere these days. No doubt about it. Since August 2024, things have really started changing. It feels like it's gone from zero to 60 in a heartbeat. But instead of getting lost in the weeds of legal jargon, we're going to break down exactly what this act means for, well, you. Your everyday life. Right. Your phone, your toaster, you name it. So first things first, what exactly is AI according to this act? Are we talking like robots taking over the world? Well, not quite robots taking over the world, but the act actually uses a really broad definition of AI. Broader than a robot uprising. Way broader. Think like everything from those little algorithms suggesting your next online purchase. Oh, those are sneaky good. To those really complex systems that can diagnose diseases, we're talking the whole spectrum. So basically, if it involves an algorithm and some data, it's probably AI in the eyes of the EU. Interesting. Why do you think they went with such a broad definition? It really shows how deeply AI is embedded in our lives now, often without us even realizing it. I mean, think about it. It's kind of scary when you actually think about it. Right. And with this broad approach, the EU can address its impact across the board. Healthcare, finance, transportation, even entertainment. It's everywhere. Okay, so they've cast a wide net. But how do they even begin to regulate such a huge range of AI applications? I mean, you can't wrangle all that with a one-size-fits-all approach. You're absolutely right. A one-size-fits-all wouldn't work. That's why they've taken what they call a risk-based approach. Risk-based, huh? So, like, some AI is riskier than others. Makes sense, I guess. But how do they decide that? Well, instead of having the same rules for everything, they categorize AI systems based on, well, how much of a potential risk they pose. Okay, so walk me through this. Give me an example of a high-risk AI versus something that's, I don't know, lower on the totem pole of AI risk. Sure. So imagine an AI system that's designed to manipulate you with, like, subliminal techniques. Okay, that's getting a little Black Mirror-ish for me. Right. Or maybe it's exploiting vulnerabilities to, I don't know, control your behavior. That would be a big no-no. That's mm. what they'd classify as unacceptable risk and just ban outright. Makes sense. I don't want my toaster telling me what to buy. Exactly. On the other hand, you have something like an AI system used for, say, credit scoring. Okay, still important, but not quite mind control. Exactly. That would be considered high risk because it can seriously impact your financial life. So the act lays down some strict rules for transparency, making sure the data is good, and even having a human keeping an eye on things. To make sure the AI isn't accidentally biased or anything like that. Precisely. They're trying to cover all the bases and think about those what if situations. So they're not just reacting to problems by actually trying to prevent them in the first place. <laughs> I like it. But this isn't just some pie in the sky idea, is it? Is the act actually, you know, making waves already? Oh, it is, without a doubt. While the full rollout is planned for August 2026, some key parts are already in play. Companies, especially those dealing with high risk AI, are scrambling to get everything in line. Because I'm guessing there's some pretty hefty consequences if they don't? You bet. We're talking huge fines, potentially millions of euros, maybe even a chunk of their global revenue, depending on how bad the violation is. It's serious business. Wow. So the EU means business when it comes to responsible AI. It's not just a slack on the wrist. No kidding. And it's a clear message to everyone. You've got to prioritize ethical AI or you're going to pay the price. And it's not just about avoiding fines. It's about building trust. It's interesting, right? You brought up general purpose AI earlier, and those are especially interesting in light of all this. Oh, yeah, those. They sounded like a pretty big deal from the article. Something about being super adaptable. So what exactly are they? Basically, they're the heavy lifters in the AI world. Yeah. The ones designed to be, well, really versatile, like ChatGPT or Google's Bard. I have heard of those. They can do 
like a zillion different things. Exactly, write different kinds of creative content, translate languages, answer your questions, you name it. They're designed to be really flexible. So they're like the Swiss Army Knives of AI, which I guess could be amazing, but also a little bit scary, right? That's the thing, huge potential, but also some unique challenges. And the act recognizes this. It sets out some specific requirements for these general purpose AI systems. Like what, what kind of extra rules do they have to follow? A big one is transparency. And this is crucial, especially for things like risk management. Okay, give me an example. How does that look in the real world? Okay, imagine a company creates a general purpose AI that's really good at recognizing images. The act says they have to be super upfront about the data they use to train it. To make sure it's not accidentally biased or anything? Like what if they only use pictures of, I don't know, cats wearing hats? Well, hopefully not cats and hats, but yeah. They need to show they've considered potential biases, especially ones that could lead to unfair or discriminatory outcomes. So like, if it's used for facial recognition, it can't be better at recognizing certain demographics than others. Exactly. It's about making sure the AI is fair and accurate for everyone. Makes sense. Yeah. So that's transparency. What else? What about those high risk use cases we were talking about? How does the act handle those when it comes to this super flexible AI? That's where it gets really interesting because a general purpose AI might seem pretty neutral on its own. Right, like it's not inherently good or bad, just depends on how you use it. Exactly. But the act says, hold on, how it's used really matters. So let's say you have this amazing AI that's great at analyzing tons of data. Okay, sounds useful so far. But then a financial institution decides to use it for making loan decisions. Uh-oh, I see where this is going. Now it's not just about analyzing data, it's about people's livelihoods. And if that data used to train, the AI has historical biases in it. You could end up with the AI accidentally discriminating against certain borrowers, even if no one programmed it to do that. Exactly. So in those cases, the EU AI Act steps in, basically says, whoa, hold up. You need to be extra careful here. Extra, extra careful, got it. They have to do these really thorough risk assessments, constantly monitor the AI, and make sure there's a human involved in the decision-making process. So it's like they're saying, we're not against innovation, but you can't just unleash these powerful AI systems without some serious safeguards in place. Right, and that's the balance they're trying to strike, fostering innovation while also protecting people from potential harm. It's like walking a tightrope, isn't it? Yeah. But it seems like a really important conversation to be having. It absolutely is. And this is something we're seeing pop up everywhere, not just in the EU. People are realizing that AI is powerful and it needs to be developed and used responsibly. So for our listeners who might be feeling a bit overwhelmed by all this, what's the key takeaway? Why should they care about this stuff, even if they're not like AI programmers or anything? The biggest thing is just awareness. This act is a sign that things are changing. We're moving towards more responsible AI, and that's something we should all be aware of. Because AI is only going to become more prevalent in our lives. Exactly. And as users, we have a voice. We can demand transparency from the companies using these systems. We can ask questions. We can push for AI that's fair and ethical. So it's not about being afraid of AI. It's about being informed and engaged. Love that. And speaking of informed and engaged, we've talked a lot about the what of the EU AI Act, but I'm curious about the how. What are companies actually doing to make sure they're following the rules? So let's say you're a company and you're listening to this maybe a little bit panicked right now. What are some tangible steps they can take? What does it actually look like to comply with this act? Well, it's not like there's a magical make my AI ethical button, unfortunately, <laughs> though that would be nice, wouldn't it? Sign me up for that. But really, it comes down to implementing more rigorous processes across the board, from how they collect data and train their models, all the way to how they roll them out and keep an eye on them. So it's not just a quick fix. It's a whole shift in how they approach AI development. It sounds like data is a big part of this. Data is absolutely key. The act makes it very clear. Data quality and transparency are non-negotiable. So no more shady data practices. Not if you want to play by the EU's rules. Companies have to be able to show that the data they're using is accurate, it's relevant, and it's free from bias. That might mean going back and cleaning up their existing data sets. Sounds like a lot of work. It can be, but it's essential to make sure the AI is built on a solid foundation. And it's not just about the data itself. They also have to be open about how it's used. The act requires companies to be transparent about how their AI systems work. 
So like pulling back the curtain and showing what's going on behind the scenes. Exactly. Explain the data, the logic, the potential risks. It's about building trust with users and being accountable for the decisions their AI makes. Makes sense. No more black boxes when it comes to AI. Yeah. So more transparency, better data practices. What else? What are some of the practical things companies are doing? A lot of companies are now putting in place these really robust monitoring systems. Like AI watchdogs? Kind of. They're designed to keep an eye on how the AI is performing in the real world, track any potential issues, and catch any unintended consequences. To make sure the AI isn't going rogue. Exactly. This might involve human reviewers, bias detection tools, even a ways for users to flag stuff that seems off. It's about creating this kind of ethical safety net around the AI. I like that an ethical safety net. So it's a lot of work, it's a big change, but ultimately it's about building better, more trustworthy AI. Precisely, and that's good for everyone. Right. So as we wrap things up here, I have to say this EU AI Act feels like a pretty big deal. It's not just about Europe, it feels like it could have a ripple effect across the globe. I think you're right. The EU is really setting a precedent here. It's a wake up call for the entire tech industry and maybe even for society as a whole. Absolutely. We're all stakeholders in this AI revolution, whether we realize it or not. So for our listeners out there, what's the one thing you want them to take away from all of this? I think the biggest thing is just to be aware. Be aware that things are changing. Be aware of the potential impact AI has on our lives. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Yes. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged in the conversation about how we want to shape the future of AI because it's a future that's being written right now and we all have a role to play. That's it for today's deep dive. We hope you learned something new and maybe even feel a little bit inspired to learn more. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep diving deep. For more insights and to join the discussion, visit the Data Innovators Exchange, a community dedicated to data professionals. I'm Peter Parker, and that's a wrap for today. Go to datapro.news to get access to weekly news, views, and interviews with the movers and shakers of the data and AI engineering world via email. Sign up today and access even more insights on modern data 